Hello and welcome to part 3 of the Excel for Beginners course. In this part we're going to begin to look at calculations and we'll be putting the formulas together shortly. Before we do that I will just show you how to recognize the different mathematical operators in Excel. Um, on the keyboard you find a number of keys that you need to use to create the calculations and they are the forward slash key for division, the star key for multiplication, the plus sign for addition and the dash or minus sign for subtraction. Now if you have a standard keyboard uh, with a, a number keypad on the right hand side you will find all these symbols positioned around the right edge of that number keypad, the top right edge. Um, if you have a, a laptop keyboard you will find the forward slash key somewhere around the bottom right area um, near the shift key or the large shift key. The multiplication key you will find on the number 8 so it's shift and 8 the plus sign is uh, next to the back delete key and you'll also find the equal sign on that key as well and the subtraction key is to the left of the plus and equals key that's where they are on the laptop keyboard and also on the standard keyboard but when you're using Excel you'll find that with the standard keyboard it's much easier to use the number keypad well I find it easier anyway now I'll just show you an example of each of these different calculations uh, as you see here we have division, multiply, addition and subtraction and we'll just create the calculations for each one so with any calculation in Excel we start with an equal sign so press the equals key click on the first part of the calculation which is the cell in column D there the number 10 press the divide sign that's the forward slash and click on the second part of the calculation which is the cell in column F. Now you see the calculation says equals D1 divided by F1 and all we're simply saying to Excel is tell me what 10 divided by 10 is. If I click on that little green tick we get the answer 1. So I'll just go through and now you know the basics I'll create each of these calculations. So it's equals 10 press the star key on the keyboard times 10 click on the tick we get the correct answer thank goodness and this is the addition key or the addition calculation press the equals key click on the first 10 click on the addition key on the keyboard the second 10 click the tick and the last one is the subtraction press the equals key click on the 10 there the minus sign on the keyboard and click on the 10 there and that's it they all seem to work fine so that that's the basics anyway at least you know where the operators are now on the keyboard so we'll go back to our other spreadsheet and we will create the calculations on here. Now the first calculation is going to be multiplication and what I want to do is multiply the value in column B, the rental price, by the number of rentals, the value in column C. So let's get started then. So I'm going to click into cell D3 or the first blank cell under the income column heading and press equals on the keyboard click on the first value in column B that I want, the one below rental price there, it's £1.95 press the star sign on the keyboard which is the multiply operator and then click on the number 5 which is the second part of the calculation, the number of rentals, click on the green tick up there on the toolbar and that enters the result 9.75 or £9.75 as it will be. I'll do one more in the next one, so it's press equals to start the calculation click on the first value multiply sign, click on the second value, click on the tick and there's the result again. Now obviously I'm clicking on this little green tick up here as I do the calculations but you can also press the enter key, um, you can also do control and enter and the difference there is when you press the enter key by itself if I just do that on the keyboard now we move down every time I press the enter key, I'll just use the arrow key to go back up, if I do control and enter it stays, I'm pressing control and enter now and what happens is that you enter the data but it stays in the cell that you created the calculation and that's the only difference really. Um, okay so we have two results there now I could go on and just manually create formants for each of those cells but I'm going to show you what most people do in Excel which is to use the auto fill feature. Now auto fill is just a way that Excel copies calculations for you and uh, to use it what you need to do is position the mouse pointer at the bottom right of the cell and then you can click and drag but a cleverer way of doing it is to simply double click 
when you double click Excel simply runs the formula all the way down the table and puts the results in for us which is fantastic okay so that's the first part of the calculations um, what I'm going to do now is add on some new labels to this table and we'll create some other formulas in a second so I'm going to have a totals row I'm going to have a row that works out the average of some of those values I'm also going to have a calculation that finds the highest value a calculation that finds the lowest value that's what maximum is maximum min is minimum and I'm also going to count the number of items in the table and I'm going to put in brackets movies which is what I want to count now I'm going to format these new labels and I'm going to align them right so I go to my formatting toolbar click the align right button and that sets those formulas against the, the next column. I'm going to create some calculations now in here. Now the total uh, in column B I'm not really interested in the total value there because it's simply a total of rent rental price that doesn't tell me anything it's pretty much useless really. However I do want to know the total of the num all the number of rentals and what I'm going to do here is I'll do a manual calculation first of all to show you how you add up lists of numbers and what you do is you type equals on the keyboard type sum do an open bracket or open parentheses and then what you do with the mouse is you click and drag and select the range of numbers that you want to include in the calculation close the bracket and there's the calculation equals sum brackets c3 colon c8 which means the range between c3 and c8 and press the enter key in this case and we get the result 49 which is exactly right well I think it is anyway okay now in the income a column uh, I also want to work out the total income this time I'm going to use the auto sum button and you'll see the difference between doing it manually and using the auto sum feature so if I just put my mouse pointer up over the auto sum button there and click it you'll see what happens it automatically puts a little marquee box around the range it thinks that you want to be added up it, Excel is just guessing but it's making an intelligent guess that the things above the way you're making the calculation are what you want added up sometimes it guesses that the things to the left of the cell are what you want adding up sometimes above uh, in this case is guessed correctly now what you can do if you don't want this blank cell to be included we can reselect the range now it doesn't really matter because there's no value in there and there won't be a value in there but if you want to be specific you can actually just reselect the range for the auto sum calculation when you're happy you can accept that in this case I'm going to press control and enter and you'll see that keeps the selected cell on the formula there or well, we get the result 97.8 and in the formula bar we see the calculations equal sum between brackets d3 colon d8 which is the range of values that concludes tutorial number three um, if you'd like to go on have a look at tutorial number four we'll cover creating the formulas for average maximum minimum and count using the pace function feature so thank you very much for watching this tutorial hope that was useful and see you next time